Postulate 5 of quantum mechanics is that the wave function, psi, evolves in time according to the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, or TDSE. Now we've seen the time-independent Schrodinger equation thus far, h psi equals e psi, and the time-dependent Schrodinger equation is that h psi of rt, some function of position, maybe x, maybe x, y, z, so h psi of rt equals i h bar and times the first partial derivative of psi with respect to t. So we have a function here of space and of time and typically when we have some partial differential equation like we do here, partial derivative with respect to time, we want to separate out those two functions into a function of space and a function of time. So we're going to separate out our time-dependent wave function into a time-independent wave function times a time function. And this again would be called separation of variables. In this course, we're either going to solve partial differential equations by separation of variables, or we're going to punt completely and just look at what the answer is. Okay, so what do we get when we separate psi of RT, where I've got this little bar here for the time-dependent part, and no bar for the space part, psi of r, times phi of t. Nope, we get h psi of r phi of t equals i h bar d psi of r dt, sorry, d psi of r phi of t dt. And we have the Hamiltonian, which if we assume is time dependent, so there's nothing in our Hamiltonian, our total energy operator that depends on time, we're going to say, that we can factor out this time piece and we get phi of t h psi equals and similarly the spatial part of our wave function doesn't depend on time so we can factor it out from this derivative so we get i h bar psi of r d phi dt this is now a total derivative because phi of t is only a function of t so this derivative is an ordinary derivative Okay, we'll now divide both sides by psi of r and, and phi of t. So we get h psi over psi equals i h bar d phi dt over phi of t. So what we have here is a function of space, which can vary in x or y or z, and a function of time, which can vary all throughout time. And these two have to be equal to each other for all values of space and all values of time. So this suggests that they both must be equal to a constant, and we'll call this constant E. Okay, so when we look at the spatial part, we have h psi over psi equals E, multiply both sides times psi, and we have h psi equals E psi. So this separation of variables approach gives us the time-independent Schrodinger equation, the TISE, that we've been working with thus far with the particle in a box and some sample problems. All right, what about our other part? We have d dt phi of t times i h bar over phi of t equals e. So we can do some uh, algebraic rearrangement there, multiply everything times phi of t, uh, divide by i h bar, or equivalently uh, multiply times minus i over h bar. We get 1 over phi of t times d phi dt equals negative i e over h bar. All right, so we're going to integrate both sides. We're going to multiply the dt over here and integrate with respect to time. We're going to integrate over here d phi over phi. So we have integral of d phi over phi. <clears throat> That's like the integral dx of 1 over x. So that is the natural log of phi of t. The integral of 1 over x is going to be, is going to be a natural log of x. So integral 1 over phi with respect to d phi is log of phi of t. Over here, integral minus i e dt over h bar. Everything in here is a constant, so it just gives us minus i e t over h bar. Um, we can take the exponent of both sides. We'll get e to the log of phi cancels and gives us phi. e to the minus i e t over h bar over here. So we have phi of t equals e to the minus i e t over h bar. Now this, n, this e here, note that that's our energy from the time independent Schrodinger equation. 
So what does this tell us? This tells us that our time portion of our time-dependent wave function is just a plane wave. It's a complex exponential. It's something that rotates around the complex plane in time. We'll look at this a few videos in the future in an animation to see how this works. But this number, notice when we multiply, its complex conjugate is e to the i e t over h bar. Its complex conjugate is 1 over this number. So when we do phi star times phi, we're just going to get 1. So it's not actually affecting the magnitude or the, or the position of the wave function. It's just rotating around the complex plane in time. And we'll see the implications of that in a few future videos. So that's our spatial part is from the time independent wave function. And we get our time part from what the energy of that function is. So our total wave function, if we're an eigenfunction of our Schrodinger equation, psi of rt equals psi of r, our spatial part, times the time piece, a complex exponential, e to the minus i e t over h bar.